Another vehicle with a two-year-old inside. Now that driver is facing charges. We've got the latest this noon. A local VFW post working to reach a new generation of veterans. How technology is playing a part in their efforts. Are you tired of the cold temperatures? We've got a forecast for you. We've got the seven day coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Police trying to figure out who shot a man just a few steps away from his family home. Relatives found him in the driveway on Longview Drive near South W.W. W. White around 530 this morning. Katrina Weber reports they and others in the neighborhood woke up to the gunfire. The call to San Antonio police around 530 this morning came moments after people on the street got a loud and violent wake up call. Gunshots rang out in the 200 block of Longview Drive and found a target in a man outside his family's home. Relatives found him down on the ground, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. One neighbor says it sounded like a barrage of bullets were fired. Police roped off the area and got to work, trying to find out what they could from others in the home. The man who was in his 20s was rushed to a hospital, but died from his wounds. Friends and family later rushed to the home after hearing about the shooting. Everyone, police included, tried their best to make sense of it. Although police spent hours here investigating, they say they still don't have a whole lot of answers. At the top of their list is who shot this man and why. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a 12 year old has passed away and police say he was forced to do push ups and hold 50 pound boxes for hours before he lost consciousness and died at a local hospital. This noon, we have learned that police have arrested two people in connection with this. The boy's father and stepmother, Derek Coles and Capri Cheatham, were charged with injury to a child causing serious bodily injury. According to the arrest paperwork, the couple alleged that the boy fell in the shower. After he was taken to the hospital, though, staff reported finding several suspicious injuries on the victim, including whip marks and internal stomach bleeding. Also new this noon, a driver passing through a neighborhood is hit with a stray bullet. Now a 41 year old is facing charges. Police say it happened yesterday in the 300 block of Berkwood Lane in Cibolo. That's just northeast of San Antonio. Officers say someone fired a gun multiple times in the area during a domestic disturbance. One of those bullets hit a nearby driver. That person should be OK. Officers say they arrested Brock Clement and charged him with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and tampering with evidence. We have new details on a wrong way crash investigation this noon. A driver now facing some charges. Police say that the 58 year old suspect was going the wrong way when he collided with another driver on San Pedro, not too far from Hildebrand. He was actually thrown from his truck. However, people say his truck kept going down the road and stopped in front of a nearby church. Two people were in the other vehicle, including a two year old child. They were both taken to the hospital as a precaution. Police are saying the suspect was booked for DWI. San Antonio is Military City USA. We have thousands and thousands of active military men and women and veterans. And as Max Masty shows us, a local VFW post made some 21st century renovations in an effort to recruit more local veterans and help those people after they've served our country. Honestly, with the quarantine, I realized that before all of that, I was isolating way more than I even realized I was. Jake Van Hovel is an Army veteran. He served two tours overseas. He got hurt um, in Afghanistan. And Jake is now one of the many local veterans using this new and improved gaming room here at VFW Post 8541. I'm excited about the VFW program incorporating gaming because I have seen how it's helped both him as a combat veteran and my dad as a combat veteran who never touched video games before. This room took months to build and the pandemic did not make the process any easier. In fact, the post was even forced to shut down for a bit. We took that time to improve our fighting position here. You know, this was just used as an old storage area. Um, we got our minds together and said, hey, we can build a gaming room. And this influx of technology here at the VFW, it means so much for Military City USA. It means so much for our veteran community, so much camaraderie, and so much for advocates of mental health. As soon as they come in the door, they feel welcome. They know this is the place to escape. And, you know, I'll sit down and talk with them two, three hours as any new, new face that comes in here. As for Jake, he's a big fan of the new facility. Making the gaming room at the VFW a big part of, you know, just my week and 
you know, the schedule I'm trying to figure out for myself. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Yes, it's time. It's officially Rodeo Week in San Antonio, and it all starts with a whole lot of dirt in the AT&T Center. Sarah Costa takes us inside the arena where volunteers are working to haul, dump, and then flatten tons of dirt for the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. You know it's officially rodeo time here in San Antonio when truck after truck is moved into the AT&T Center, dumping dirt into the arena. Over 2,000 tons of dirt in this arena. A group of about a dozen volunteers loaded, moved, and leveled the dirt into the process that takes about seven hours the dirt is maintained at a depth of 10 to 12 inches. So get this, this dirt was purchased from Charlotte back in 1988, is actually kept on property and every year moved back into the arena via 70 truckloads. It's a well-oiled machine, so to speak. Everyone knows their part and it gets done probably in about seven hours or so to get the dirt in here from outside. We're excited about it and just seeing it all come together from beginning, uh, it, it's, it's just exciting. The dirt will remain in the arena throughout the rodeo, which runs this Thursday until February 23rd. The grounds for the rodeo open this Thursday at 10 a.m. and entertainment kicks off at 7 p.m. with Toby Keith. From the AT&T Center, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Matter of fact, we're going to be broadcasting live the 7 to 9 portion of the rodeo Thursday night. Opening night, you're going to see all those events, the bareback riding, the bronc busting, the steer rest and all that stuff because those guys right there are out of town. And then following the rodeo, there's going to be a post game special with Ursula and myself and Alicia Brera. So join us Thursday night from 7 till 10 because these guys are gone. We'll talk about that coming up. An FDA regulated study could change the way doctors treat atrial fibrillation in the future. In the next half hour, how a treatment that's already available might be the key to better results for patients diagnosed with AFib. And the White House is growing increasingly concerned over the tension between Russia and Ukraine, how world leaders are still trying to pursue a diplomatic solution. President Joe Biden set to meet with the German chancellor at the White House today as tensions continue to build with Russia over Ukraine. The U.S. is warning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine that could come at any day. And that's despite President Vladimir Putin's denials. Meanwhile, Putin also meeting today with French President Macron. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more. As Russia escalates its military presence near Ukraine, a high-level diplomatic effort is underway. French President Emmanuel Macron flying to Moscow today to hold a face-to-face -face meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in an effort to avert war with Ukraine. And President Biden is set to host German Chancellor Olaf Scholz at the White House amid criticism Germany must speak out more forcefully against Putin's threats. The U.S. is now warning there's a very distinct possibility Putin will order an attack on Ukraine. It could take a number of different forms. It could happen as soon as tomorrow or it could take some weeks yet. Uh, he has put himself in a position with military deployments uh, to be able to act aggressively against Ukraine at any time now. The Kremlin continues to deny it will attack. But ABC News has learned that Russia now has in place 70 percent of the forces needed for a full scale invasion of Ukraine. Satellite images show Russian troops accumulating in neighboring Belarus. And Russia has released new video of military drills alongside Belarusian troops, including tanks and heavy mobile missile launchers. Russia's buildup of firepower is prompting U.S. concerns that a full-out invasion could result in between 35,000 and 50,000 Ukrainian civilian casualties. This is a military that's backed by a lot of firepower, a lot of air power, naval power. The Russian Navy is gathering in the Mediterranean. A senior Biden administration official says that if Russia does invade Ukraine, the U.S. will take steps to block the Nord Stream 2 natural gas pipeline, which goes between Russia and Germany. Germany has hesitated to endorse such a move. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. What a pretty day we have on tap, and it was actually pretty nice over the weekend, too.
It really was. I feel like we kind of deserve it after, you know, last week. It's we earned it. Cold and icy. Yeah, we, we earned it. And it is beautiful. Uh, temperatures today will be up close to 60 degrees. The aquifer is down a little bit, 10 foot foot to 665 even. In your pollen count, mountain cedar jumped back up today. Sort of a last gasp, I hope. Uh, moderate 240. Molds are low at 80. We'll take a look ahead to the forecast, which includes more nice weather this week. That's coming up. I don't know if we could have asked for a better weekend. There was just enough cold in the air to make you think it's winter time, but then it warmed up enough to make you think, ooh, spring's around the corner. Mm -hmm. This is not, it was beautiful. Absolutely perfect. It's a good February weekend. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And today is really going to be no different, guys. Maybe a little bit warmer this afternoon, but we started it off chilly in the 30s. Uh, temperatures here in town uh, got down to 39. Now, it was not down to the freezing. We, we logged several days where we did get down to the freezing, but not this morning. Kerrville was one of the few spots that did drop below the freezing mark, along with Fredericksburg. Got down to 31 there this morning. Let's talk about freezing temperatures. So far this season, we've had 13 days at or below freezing. Our average is 15, and keep in mind, we still have plenty of time left to see uh, several more. But we had four days below 25 degrees, and all of those were in February, uh, the last few mornings, where we did get down to uh, 21 on February 4th. That was our coldest. Uh, we'll see where we end up, but it looks like it could be just about average this season. And uh, while it is average, the number there, we've had some pretty intense freezes. Uh, again, to start February. A uh, satellite picture shows that we've got clear skies now. There are a few thin high clouds off to the south and west. Some of those may try to work in, but really, I think it's going to be a sunny day. And as we zoom out some, that is not the case. As you go down to the valley, uh, some rain down there. Now, it is starting to come to an end. Brownsville seeing an end to the rain, but some rain coming across the Gulf of Mexico into places like New Orleans out ahead of a fast moving storm system here that's kind of rounding the base of our trough and moving out doesn't do much for us. Uh, we're going to see again pretty quiet conditions. We did have a few clouds earlier. You can see on the time lapse they moved out and now we're left with those uh, blue skies. Temperatures 58 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at 14. Dew point is at 31. Winds will be a little bit breezy today by the way. 56 in Comfort, 52 Bernie Stage, 58 in Divine, 51 Lost Maples. 58 in Gonzales, starting to see some 60s down to the south. Carrizo Springs, Pleasanton, Beeville down to Catua, all in the low 60s at this hour. And dew points are in the 20s and 30s. So we're in the very dry category. That doesn't really change all that much this week. It'll be a relatively dry week as far as humidity is concerned. And these northerly winds that we're seeing today just drives in more of that dry air. We've got some gusty winds gusting to 22 in Kerrville, gusting to 20 in Fredericksburg. And with those gusty winds, we did have a wind chill earlier. Uh, the wind speed, the wind gust forecast, I think we'll see some gusts up around 2025 as we get into the afternoon. Those winds will die down some tonight. And uh, because we're getting those northerly winds and dry, uh, driving in some slightly drier air, temperatures will be a little chillier by tomorrow morning than they were this morning. Look for highs to be right around 60 today here in town, 63 Pleasanton, 62 in Catula, 50s in the hill country. And then tomorrow morning, we're down to about 34. I'm not forecasting a freeze here in town, but certainly outlying areas could get close to that number. 30 in Kerrville, 31 Fredericksburg tomorrow morning. As we look down the line, the upper level pattern, it, it's a pretty stable pattern for us. The only change I see is as we get into Friday, maybe Saturday, a little area of low pressure may kick up a shower or two on Saturday. Don't think it's a great chance. So all in all, this is a quiet forecast. 65 tomorrow, 68 Wednesday. Uh, upper 60s Thursday, Friday, and maybe a small, small chance for rain, as I mentioned, on Saturday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Another world champion boxer called San Antonio home, and another big-time fight could be coming to the Alamo City. Hey, talk about taking advantage of a situation. Last week, San Antonio's own Jesse Bam Rodriguez was preparing for one fighter and a belt, but ended up getting asked to move up to the main event because of one of the fighters becoming ill with a non-COVID illness. So new opponent and a bigger belt and bigger shot in Phoenix, Arizona. The undefeated Rodriguez faced veteran fighter Carlos Suarez, and in 12 rounds, 
the WBAC World Felderweight title on the line as well. Bam Rodriguez came out swinging. He had to move up and wait for the fight, but was in total control, as you see there. That big punch came in the third round when he landed an uppercut that sent quadrants to the canvas. From there, Rodriguez continued the brutal attack and ended up winning by unanimous decision. 117-110, 117-110, 115-112 to become San Antonio's newest world champion boxer. He and company flew back to San Antonio yesterday afternoon. You can see he arrived there with all hugs and some standing ovations from people around the uh, baggage claim area. And then we got to talk to him about that big fight, big win, and that big belt. Show me the, the belt. Describe it to me when they gave it to you. How, how did that feel? And, and you know, it was my first time touching one. It was just, it was so amazing, man. I've, I've always looked at these belts and wanted one myself, and you know, I finally have it. It still hasn't hit me. You know, it still feels like a dream, honestly. Uh, not only that, but it's just, it's crazy, man. It, it's so surreal. It's everything, you know, everything I've dreamed of since uh, starting boxing. I've always dreamed of uh, capturing my first world title and. To finally, you know, live in the moment, it feels amazing. It was a 12, it was 12 rounds full of war, uh, battle. I dropped him in the third, and then the fifth is when I really like felt like I started taking over and just, you know, fighting my fight, started boxing him the way I was supposed to. But you know, I, I came out with the victory, and you know, I'm very happy. And congratulations to him. Rodriguez becomes the youngest current boxing champ at 22 years old, and what a way to celebrate a birthday! Just turned 22, but earlier this month. Congratulations to San Antonio's newest world champion boxer. Over in Las Vegas, Mario Barrios fought in his second straight pay-per-view fight and made his debut at welterweight. Barrios faced Keith Thurman. Thurman hadn't been in the ring in two years, but wasted no time getting used to it. Thurman was cautious in his attack, kept Barrios at bay. Thurman landed more punches and even caused two cuts above Mario's left eye. Despite all the blood, Barrios never looked like he was going to be knocked out or even knocked down, but in the end, Thurman won by unanimous decision, 118-110, 118-110, and 117-111. He was saying, he was saying he's gonna knock me out and all this stuff, and I couldn't hurt him. But I mean, I, I think we all saw, you know, I, again, you know, I belong up, up here with, you know, the great fighters. And um, I mean, uh, overall, me and my team, I mean, we're, 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 we're happy with the outcome, I man. Shout out to everybody who showed up. I appreciate y'all's support. And much love, man. Barrios is now 26 and two but plans to stay at welterweight. You can read more about this fight and BAM's title win on instant replay page of KSAT.com. And on Friday around midnight, the golden boy Oscar De La Hoya sent out a tweet saying, my birthday gift, the return of Ryan Garcia on April 9th from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. No official word from the Dome yet. The fight doesn't appear on the Alamo Dome website, at least not this morning. There hasn't been any announcement from promoters, but even Ryan Garcia himself sent out this tweet on Saturday. This would be the first big fight in San Antonio this year, and it brings one of the most popular young boxers in the game to San Antonio. And San Antonio Spurs are saddled up, moving out of Lake town for the next 19 days on their annual rodeo road trip. It'll start this Wednesday. They will play their first five games before the All-Star break. The Spurs are coming off a route of the Rockets again, 131-106 in their last home game before leaving San Antonio until the end of February. Keldon Johnson led the Spurs. He had 28. Zach Collins played in his first NBA game since 2020. Two foot surgeries later, he scored 10 points. As a result of the victory, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich only needs six more wins to become the all-time winning his coach in the NBA. And what makes it even more remarkable? It'll be the first to accomplish that with one team. But he also became the first coach to reach the milestone of 1,500 wins, including playoff victories. With that Rockets win, the Spurs getting in some much needed rest and practices before leaving town tomorrow. They're grateful for a much needed break. Feels great, you know. Um, it's been it's been a wild season. Obviously, this month has been crazy for our team. January, uh, I think we had like 17 games or whatever it was. So um, it just feels good to have in the NBA. If you can have a two-day break, it's huge. If you can have a four-day break, it's even better. Especially with All-Star break coming up, we know we have another one coming, so we can finish out these last five games, you know, with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and just playing as hard as we can. By the way, DeJounte Murray says he's not upset he wasn't named to the All-Star Conference Reserves with the West. 
though he's having a career year with 10 of his 14 franchise tying triple doubles coming this season. He can still be named as an injury replacement by NBA Commissioner Adam Silver if that happens. So we still have a few days to see maybe if somebody decides to drop out and they select him. He would deserve it. All right, so here's the start of their rodeo road trip. They're at Cleveland on Wednesday, then Atlanta on Friday, and then New Orleans on Saturday. Just three of the eight rodeo road trip games there for you. And they usually do pretty good during usually, the rodeo road trip. But let's hope this is one of those years. All right. Science is creating a new material that combines the strength of steel and the lightness of plastic. And they already have big plans for it. We have details in the next half hour. And new research could have doctors making changes when helping patients who suffer from irregular heartbeats. How an old treatment option is being used in a new way. A no-knock warrant resulting in the death of a 22-year-old man in Minneapolis. Police shooting and killing the man when a SWAT team burst into a Minneapolis apartment. Police body cam footage showing how it all unfolded. ABC's Rita Roy reports his parents are demanding justice. The heartbroken parents of 22-year-old Amir Locke calling for justice and demanding answers. He was um, my second born. Um, he was a beautiful baby boy. He was very respectful and caring. Everybody that came in contact with him loved him. Locke was shot and killed Wednesday morning by Minneapolis police during a no-knock raid. We've paused the difficult to watch video. Body camera video shows officers using a key to enter an apartment. Locke appears to be asleep under a blanket and startled awake. Police say he had a gun in his hand when Officer Mark Hanneman fired at least three shots just nine seconds after entering, killing Locke. Officer Hanneman now placed on administrative leave. He didn't have an intent to hurt those officers. He wasn't even awake. Locke's family says his gun was licensed and legally owned. He researched everything very intelligent on Amir's part before he even purchased the kind of gun that he wanted and he made sure that it was licensed with the permit. Demonstrators taking to the streets over the fatal shooting. The officers were carrying out a no-knock warrant for a homicide investigation in St. Paul, but Locke, who does not live in the apartment, was not listed on that warrant. Back in November of 2020, city officials restricted the use of no-knock warrants as part of a series of reforms enacted in the wake of the death of George Floyd. A city council meeting is scheduled this afternoon to discuss a ban on no-knock warrants. Despite restrictions, St. Paul police say Minneapolis police insisted a no-knock warrant be issued in addition to the standard search warrant. They have so far declined to explain why. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Jury selection begins in the federal hate crime trial of three men already convicted of murdering Ahmoud Aubrey, the first 50 potential jurors to report to a courthouse in Brunswick, Georgia today. They're being questioned to see if they can serve as fair and unbiased. Because of intense pre-trial publicity, roughly 1,000 people across 43 Georgia counties got jury doses for this trial. Greg and Travis McMichael and their neighbor William Roddy Bryan chased Arbery down in a pickup truck as he ran through their neighborhood. Federal prosecutors say the three white men targeted Arbery because he was black. President Joe Biden planning to visit Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett before the end of the year. That's according to a readout of the call between the leaders that was released yesterday. During that talk, Biden and Bennett discussed other issues, including challenges with Iran and the Middle East. Biden also said, quote, underscored his commitment to expanding stability and partnerships across the Middle East region, unquote. Back here at home today as the city of Austin is testing water samples to see if its drinking water is safe. This comes after the city issued a boil order notice on Saturday night. Yesterday, residents were able to pick up cases of water during a distribution event. Austin Water says the trouble started after a staff at a treatment plant made some kind of mistake. The utility company did not release details about that error. However, it says it's working to make sure it doesn't happen again. In the meantime, Austin residents will have to boil their water at least through tomorrow. Austin Water won't have the results from today's water samples for another 24 hours. 
In your health headlines, an FDA regulated study could change the way doctors treat atrial fibrillation in the future. AFib, it's an irregular heartbeat. It could cause poor blood flow. It could lead to blood clots and stroke, and in some cases, heart failure too. Traditionally, medication is the first treatment used to manage intermittent AFib, but if medication doesn't work, doctors then will try a procedure called an ablation. Well, now a clinical trial has found a certain type of ablation is safe and more effective than the medication route. Doctors say using ablation as the first treatment could keep AFib away longer and prevent it from getting worse. So if you take into account the success rate of the ablation itself, 75% versus 45%, that's very good news for our patients. But also, if you take into account healthcare utilization, those patients took medication and they, a big proportion of them uh, still ended up needing an ablation. More than 200 patients at 24 hospitals around the U.S. took part in the study. And high blood pressure, that's a phrase most Americans have heard in their lives. The condition can be serious enough to land you in the hospital, and it's become more common in the last two decades despite national campaigns to reduce it. ABC's M. Wynn with some alarming statistics. Despite better medications available to treat high blood pressure, more and more people are ending up in the hospital, and it's affecting demographic groups differently. Researchers at Yale have found that the mortality rate from high blood pressure and strokes is increasing in all ethnic groups, but it's affecting black Americans the most. The researchers also found that amongst all groups, there's been a decrease in the control of blood pressure since 1991. Even with the national focus, the researchers saw a striking increase in health disparities between black black and white Americans, finding there's more work to be done in reducing systemic differences in care provided in different populations. Prolonged high blood pressure can put you at risk for organ damage, heart disease and stroke. Though most people won't experience any symptoms for high blood pressure, if you notice repeated headaches, nosebleeds or shortness of breath, contact your doctor immediately. Good blood pressure control is vital to staying healthy and with multiple options for medications and management, there has never been a better time to take action. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC News. And here's a new invention for you. It's as light as plastic and strong as steel. The new material was unveiled by researchers with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They say it is made from the same substance that makes plastic. In fact, the new material is even harder to break than bulletproof glass. Scientists believe the material can be easily manufactured in large quantities. The researchers proclaim it could be used to make everything from lightweight coatings for cars and phones to important infrastructure such as bridges. Bridges? That's pretty cool. I don't know if I'd ride on that bridge though. And so is this, 59 <laughs> degrees, some well-earned beautiful postcard weather. I mean, it does look beautiful out there. It really is a nice day. We're already seeing temperatures get close to 60 <laughs> degrees. So this afternoon, we'll probably be in the low 60s, full sun. Maybe some gusty winds from time to time, but all in all, pretty nice. Let's look at the numbers right now. 53 in Fredericksburg, 52 Rock Springs. It's a little cooler up there. Uh, but San Antonio at 58. And you got some 60s on the map. Pleasanton down to Carrizo Springs and Catula as we zoom out across the state. A little cooler in the Texas Panhandle, 47 in Amarillo, 46 right now in Lubbock. And uh, the satellite picture shows that most of the state is looking at clear skies. We've got some clouds down across uh, the valley, some rain down there, but that is generally moving out. So we're going to see a lot of sun here in the Lone Star State today. That heavy rain that was around Brownsville earlier has now moved out. They're just left with a little bit of cloud cover at this hour. There's the scene here in San Antonio. It doesn't get much better than that. We're at uh, 58 right now. Dew point is at 31. Northerly winds at 14 miles per hour in those winds. Again, May gusts to 20 to 25. Rest of the afternoon, 60 degrees. Your high, 53 by 6 p.m. And down to 47 by the 8 o'clock hour with uh, clear skies. More of this great weather on the way this week and maybe a small, small rain chance by the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Can't wait to hear about that. Two new movies cracked the top five at the box office over the weekend. Did either or both manage to sneak past Spider-Man? A look at your weekend box office rankings coming up next. Good news for international travelers who are looking to head down under. How Australia is easing its travel restrictions after the break. Hello, 
everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Take-Two Interactive set to report their fiscal third quarter earnings for 2022 after the bell today. The Wall Street consensus expects the video game developer to post earnings of $1.19 per share and $868.9 million in revenue. Shares of Take-Two spiked over 7% Friday. That after their subsidiary, Rockstar, confirmed that Grand Theft Auto 6 is now in development. Meanwhile, Delta Airlines looking to put all unruly passengers on the no-fly list moving forward. Delta made the request to the Justice Department that in a letter from CEO Ed Bastian, who said there would be zero tolerance for any behavior that may affect flight safety. This comes as Delta sees their rate of incidents shoot up 100%, and that's dating back to 2019. And cryptocurrency exchanges reportedly shelling out millions of dollars to run advertisements during the upcoming Super Bowl 56. Coinbase, FTX, and Crypto.com going to be among those reportedly running a spot during the American broadcast. The goal for crypto exchanges to make their platforms a more household name, and there's no better way to do it than during the Super Bowl. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Bachado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Queen Elizabeth using her Platinum Jubilee celebration to give a glimpse into the future of the crown. In celebration of her 70th year on the throne, she has now declared that Camilla will be known as Queen Consort when Charles becomes king. The monarch is the only person who could define the royal titles, so her intervention here is actually very significant. Camilla is currently referred to as Duchess of Cornwall in deference to Prince Charles's late first wife, Diana. Australia's prime minister says the country now opening its borders later this month. However, if you're making the trip, you're going to need to be double vaccinated to enter Australia. And of course, you're going to need a valid visa too. tough restrictions to travel to Australia. Grabbing headlines last month when tennis player Novak Djokovic had his visa canceled. He was deported before he could even compete in the Australian Open. Those restrictions began easing up in November for travelers from New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea, and Japan. Starting on February 22nd, travelers from most other countries are also going to be allowed to enter. Beijing Winter Olympics mascot Bing Dwin Dwin is a big hit at the Games. The mascots getting huge cheers from crowds, sometimes louder than those heard for the athletes competing. BDD can be easily spotted at event sites in the stands on signage and on flags. While stuffed BDDs are given to medalists, there are reports that souvenir shops are already sold out. And taking a look at the medal count at the Winter Olympics, Canada is in second. Where's, uh, where, where's the U.S.? Hey, that's weird. Wow. That is pretty strange. Of course, it's still early. They've only been competing for a couple of days. So they get, uh, got to pick things up over there. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. Apparently the mascot's doing better than U.S. right now. So I introduced my kids to curling the other day. <laughs> oh, did it, they laugh? They lasted about three minutes, and they're like, this is boring. Change the channel. They didn't uh, like the little brooms or anything? I thought it was fascinating. It's like bowling. It is. Somewhat. It, it actually takes a lot of skill. Yeah. It's a big deal. But uh, There's some pretty good memes of the U.S. team mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Something having to do with cornholing. And <laughs> so your daughters are not going to be curlers when they grow up. Maybe. maybe. Give them maybe. We'll see. <laughs> maybe I can have them come around on that one. 58 degrees so far today. 39 was low this morning. Records are 86 and 13. Set back in 2017 and 1895. Some good weather ahead. We'll take a look at that seven-day forecast coming up. So if you were going to practice your curling in San Antonio, I guess last week would have been the time to do it. So, yeah, not this we week. We can't even do it this week. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, it would have worked out well last Thursday, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, things changed a little bit this week. We've got some good weather on the way. This is how it always works out, right? We get one of these big storm systems. It wreaks havoc. We get ice, whatever. And then after that, feels like we get a week of reprieve here. And that's exactly what we're dealing with. Some beautiful weather. Now, blue skies as we go outside for you. 58 degrees at the airport, 62 stints and 59 Kelly, 56 at Randolph, and we've got northerly winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Satellite picture shows no cloud cover, at least here around San Antonio, and those temperatures in the 50s for the most part. Now you go south, you will find some 60s on the map. Pleasanton at 62, 61 Kennedy. And if you're watching us from Creosote Springs and Cotula, a few thin high clouds work in your direction, but uh, not a big deal. 
a lot of sun for everybody, enough to push those temperatures into the 60s for a lot of us. Uh, the big picture here across the state, we noticed some rain out in the Gulf of Mexico. We had some showers and a few storms earlier uh, around the Brownsville area, but that is moving out. It's a piece of energy moving east and away from Texas at this point, but there is going to be quite a bit of weather up and down the east coast as it uh, moves in their direction. More rain, maybe some wintry weather as you get up into the higher elevations. It has been a busy winter so far for those folks on the east coast. The rest of the country really pretty quiet. There's not much there. This is a pretty quiet weather pattern, not only for the western half of the country, but for us as well. Temperature wise, really cold stuff's up there around the Great Lakes and even then that's not that cold, not as cold as it was last week. 12 in Minneapolis, 23 Chicago, 32 in St. Louis. And then you got temperatures above freezing on the East Coast as some of that uh, precipitation moves in and that's a good thing uh, here across Texas. Uh, again, the weather is it, really pretty nice. Uh, 62 in Corpus Christi, 60 in Houston. The coldest numbers you have are up in the Texas Panhandle out in the mountains of West Texas. It's 41 right now in Marfa. Another look outside again, 58 degrees at the airport, uh, 54 Canyon Lake, 59 in New Braunfels. And the dew point tracker shows that uh, we'll have dew points staying f uh, relatively low here through much of the week. They don't really rise above well out of the 30s, not until Saturday. And even then, that's fairly dry. But I, I think on Saturdays, we get a little bit of energy in here. There's the opportunity for a shower or two. Chances aren't great, uh, but they are there. For the rest of today, we'll take it up to about 60 degrees. Temperatures fall off pretty quickly tonight, though, once the, the sun goes down into the 40s by 8 p.m. And we'll still get some northerly winds, although they calm a little bit as we go into tonight. Uh, here is the big picture and the forecast going forward. Still some cold air up across the Great Lakes. As I mentioned, a pretty quiet weather pattern. One little piece of energy breaks off and that will be just to our south and west on Friday. That uh, will move a little bit closer on Saturday and that's why I think we have a small chance and I mean small chance for some rain. Uh, generally speaking, this is a pretty dry forecast. Uh, so 65 coming up tomorrow. We drop down at 34 by tomorrow morning. So close to freezing, but not quite here in town. 37 Wednesday to start and then 68 by the afternoon. We'll be pretty close to 70 by the end of the work week with mostly sunny skies. More cloud cover on Saturday with a 20% chance of rain and then a slight cool down on Sunday with a high of 59 and partly cloudy. We'll be right back. There's a brand new series based on a true story of a real life scandal involving New York's high society. CNN's David Daniel looks at the talked about new limited series debuting this week, Inventing Anna. I might have a story. Her name is Anna Delvey or Anna Sorokin. No one's sure. She's either a rich German heiress or she's flat broke. The charges are insane. Inventing Anna stars Julia Garner as the woman who dazzled New York social scene, stealing hearts and much more. I am famous. People are painting a public picture of me as a criminal. That's not my story. And what is your story? Anna Klumsky plays a writer trying to put it all together. I knew nothing about it. Um, I, you know, I don't have Instagram. I live under a rock. I did not. I got to come fresh. The most expensive resort in Morocco. I realized the clues were there all along. She put it all on my cards. The amazing story and Shonda Rhimes scripts had the cast entranced. We were having table readings when I was gasping and like, <gasps> like I was, I'm very intense. Like I was, I was really loud <laughs> during the table readings, just being like, ah, oh no. I, so it was, I was going through it. That first table read, the energy in the room was extraordinary. Mm. I mean, we were banging on the desk laughing. We were gasping. It, it was so theatrical, but there also was like this real emotional current. They put me in handcuffs and everything. Can you imagine? Yeah, they do that. I get to ask the questions that many people want to ask. Like, do you actually believe the lies that you are telling? As long as we just say the words while we're shooting it and don't mess it up, like it's all there because it's there on the page. Image, money, power. Everyone is hustling. Real hot girl. Every day men do fabulous things and anything I've allegedly done. Anna stole a jet. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Every movie in the franchise has opened at number one, and Jackass Forever continued the streak. It topped the chart with $23.5 million. Moonfall launched in second place with $10 million and figured dwarfed by the disaster flicks reported $138 million budget. Spider-Man No Way Home dropped to third, but made another $9.6 million for a domestic total of $749 million. Scream fell to fourth place on ticket sales of $4.7 million. $4.2 million gave Sing 2 the fifth place spot and a domestic total of $140 million. I didn't know you could say that word on TV. I, Don't say it again. I'm say it again. Wash your mouth out soap. <laughs> you wouldn't be the... <laughs> Mother did that more than once. Valentine's Day just a week away, and SA lies. SA Live is getting us ready with gifts and treats and recipes. Mike and Fiona, they would never use language like that. They just, they just eat and enjoy life. It's family. It is one week from Valentine's, and we are making Valentine's for Veterans. KSAC Community Spotlight with Soldiers Angels. And, of course, ahead of Valentine's Day, how about a little pampering for yourself or your sweetheart? We take you to Pro's Nails and show you a pedicure that's just the bomb. And then how about some Valentine's soap? Oh yes, yeah, squeaky clean and romantic from Organically Bath and Beauty. And you know what Sunday is the big game and Tony Sachery's game day bacon wrapped drumettes. Ooh, that sounds good. And Mrs. Kitchen Restaurant, soul food here in San Antonio. And the yummy, sweet, tasty treats. Cakes by Felicia is here with some Valentine's sweets. And VNA Rodriguez shows us a great concha banana pudding. Yum. Plus, what kind of action, what, what do you need if you're an action hero? We'll answer that question. Two things only. Coming up. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. <laughs>